Well, we're always trying out new things uh, in the vlog. This is what it's for. Uh, every so often we change things up, and this, it, it, this is how it works. Uh, as we move forward, as we advance, you advance with it. You see, you see everything uh, as it occurs. And uh, I just filmed the uh, the pants video, <laughs> the, the, the riding pants video. Didn't see much of the pants because uh, the camera wasn't aimed properly. But at the same time, uh, there was a lighting issue that there was off to the left. There wasn't enough light, so I've got to rearrange my lighting uh, so that you can see the screen. Uh, you can hear the uh, background when I'm not there, uh, when I'm off changing my pants. In other words, we'll slowly but surely get the formula right. Uh, and But as I said, you're seeing the progress as it comes along. You're seeing things uh, grow, and you start starting to see some progress, uh, you know, how, how it occurs. And so this is a short segment that I'm going to be tacking on to the end of the... Uh, of the uh, of the last video I just shot, the last clip, and this is sort of the explanation of that. Well, the progress of uh, the media room in terms of becoming media room research has, has come along very very well. So the productivity is going up. Um, I am editing a video. Uh, it's for the the uh, December. Yeah, they're editing December twenty fourth. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I'm editing uh, November twenty fourth. Today is uh, December twenty fifth. Actually, it's uh, uh, four hours and twenty nine minutes into the day of uh, Friday, December twenty fifth. Uh, so, Merry Christmas for those who celebrate uh, Christmas. Uh, for myself uh, and many of the Eastern Christians, we're celeb celebrating Saint Spiridon. Uh, as I said before, he is one of our important saints in the church. Because uh, he, he, the saints that become important are the ones who have done things oh, at pivotal points within the history of the church that sort of change things, either f for the worse, in other words, they survived what was happening to them and became iconic for that particular period of struggle. Or they move things forward in in the sense that uh, they brought light to light to darkness, uh, you know, shone the light into the darkness, and it sort of woke people up and got people to realize that they were in a situation that wasn't necessarily good. And so the, the Saint Spiridon was one of these people. We will go, we'll be going into Saint Spiridon and uh, who he was. Uh, in the uh, show of meditations, when that comes up, uh, probably sometime next week, uh, we'll get the uh, show uh, meditation started. It's going to take about a month to get things sort of uh, really rolling along, so it won't be uh, meditations won't be fully going uh, until uh, basically the uh, midweek of January. So it won't be till 2021 that we will have the show sort of uh, rolling along on a weekly basis. So the Meditation is going to be weekly, not uh, daily, because this is going to stay daily. Uh, we're going to have a, a show called, basically a new show called Tweetline Plus that's going to be every other day. And then again, uh, on every three weeks, you're going to have a show called uh, Headlines and Beyond. So I am working on more, more shows. Uh, I've fixed up some of the productivity uh, within uh, Instagram. So I've got my Instagram uh, feed TV working. I'm, I've got the voice done, so I'm, I've already put out some of my uh, the first content. I have to repair some of the content because it didn't go up as I expected. It. I, I edited it; it worked fine on the desktop, uh, on the phone. When I uploaded it to uh, to Instagram and played it back, it didn't. the The audio was out of sync with the video, so. Uh, there are things I have to sort of, sort of uh, play with, I have to tweak in order to get that working properly. But otherwise, you know, things are are, are working out pretty well. And I'm, I'm using the same the same uh, uh, tripod that I used uh, for uh, for showing you the pants, that the, the, the trial segment. I'm using here now, uh, just that it, it, I haven't moved it. I don't move the tripod. I just raise and lower the head. You know the top part of the tripod. There's the, there's 
there's the tall part of the problem, and then there's the T part here. As long as you raise the head up on on its uh, on its riser, uh, from we're almost near the bottom to up near the top, uh, I can film without moving the uh, tripod. And so it's just a matter of editing the beginning segment and the ending segment where where I'm getting up and moving to the to the front of the camera, moving into the frame of the camera. Uh, that's where things have to sort of uh, I have to work out, and I think I've got a situa uh, way a workaround for the lighting so that you can see the video in the background as I'm talking, uh, particularly for if there there are times when there need when when there are gaps and what I have to say where I have to go uh, change clothes or, or or something along those lines, uh, that kind of fills in the space uh, when I'm not in frame. So uh, these are things that are working out, and I said this. We don't cut anything out. We really don't cut anything out. We, we cut out, you know, spaces beginning in the video, the spaces in the end of the video, so that you don't have large pauses in terms of the start of the clip and the end of the clip. You have a seamless uh, transition from clip to clip, but or segment to segment. Uh, that's the only cutting out. That's the only editing that's done. The flubs, the the missed lines, the uh, thoughts. Uh, the pauses to rephrase something, it's all in there. And so you see, even even when I'm in, in, a, in, in, a, in a very exhausted state, I'm still vlogging. You know, I'm just sort of trying to, people say, well, why do you, you look like that? Why, why did you film that? Because if the vlog is going to be about reality, then you vlog all the states, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the ugly states are the ones where I'm not putting my words together properly, and in many cases, I'm slurring my words, so it's hard to understand me. But also, the thoughts aren't coming to my mind in the manner that I want to phrase them into certain... So I have to rephrase them, and it takes me a while to sort of rephrase things, and that's where you see a lot of the pauses and the gaps and the... You know, all the... You see the fatigue. The fatigue is there. And that's, see, that's, that's the nature of research. Research is a lot like that. The, the fatigue is always going to be there. It's not going to change. But, anyways, uh, that's it for now. I would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas uh, for those of you who are celebrating. Uh, for those of you who are on the Eastern calendar, Happy uh, Happy St. Spirit on Day. Konipala. late start to the day, sort of, well, at least start to the vlog anyways, it is uh, 20 hours and 31 minutes into the 25th day of December, it is Christmas for the majority of the world, however, for the Eastern Christians, uh, is the, in, this includes the Russians, uh, it's not going to be until January 7th that we celebrate our Christmas. Uh, thus, ironically enough, if you go back into history, you'll find that England was on this uh, calendar. Uh, uh, so was the United States. This is why a large chunk of uh, the inauguration doesn't doesn't occur till so late. Is because basically uh, January first is uh, the the New Year is uh, is basically. Mm, excuse me, is uh, January 13th, January 14th. And so you, the beginning of the year is then. Uh, and this was on the calendar the United States was founded on. And that's your original Christmas. What happened is the calendar was changed uh, by one of the popes, by Pope Gregory. Pope Gregory. And rather than adjusting for, uh, for the calendar differences, he simply put the same dates down uh, from one calendar to the next. Uh, but the thing is, calendars are different depending on how you calculate things. Uh, the calendar that everyone had been on prior to Pope Gregory uh, was an astronomical calendar. It considered the sun, the moon, the stars, everything. It had everything in it. Uh, the new calendar, the calendar created by, the Pope, by Pope Gregory, the, the, basically the papist calendar, uh, that everyone's following today 
is only a solo calendar. It only considers the path of the sun. It doesn't consider anything else. So for, astronaut, for astronomical users, you really can't use it. So if you want to set D GPS, because GPS is how it is, is set by astronomy, you need to use the astronomical calendar. And the dates are different. There is a difference in the, in the dates because uh, where you are in the orbit, according to your astronomical background, matters if you're doing with an astronomical calendar. And so there are differences in the dates. Uh, but Pope uh, Gregory thought he knew best because uh, he was God on Earth. And he said, well, uh, our calendar, does, uh, it, uh, the calendar seems to be not correct. It doesn't seem to be ha be perfect the way God is. And so we're, you know, God is perfect. He created the world perfect. The only thing that's not perfect is the human beings. We are the ones who are sinful and that's about it. And, and so I said, we're going to change the calendar. And that's what they did. They they sat down and over a period of basically 50 years changed the calendar. Uh, where the, if you look at some of the historical texts, because uh, this goes back to uh, ancient Egypt and they were doing this all the way ba back in Sumeria. Uh, the calculation of the calendar, the, 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 the structure of the calendar is set in Sumerian mathematics. That's, that's, uh, that's based on the circle. And so you have a minimum of 3,000 years getting to 0 AD. At the time of Christ, you had 3,000 years of, cal of development of the calendar. So when the Pope Gregory changed the calendar in 1500 AD, and people were using, using the term now CEE, -E, uh, 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 using CE, -E, the, co the common ear. But our... We, we, there is no such thing as a common era. If you want to talk about the common era, our era currently is co common in tr to uh, to Sigmund Freud. We are just beginning the the, the Timothy Leary uh, Ram Dass era. We're, this is where we're emerging from. A large chunk of when you want to talk about socialism. Socialism depends on the era of psychology. And if you were in prior to uh, basically 1975. You're in a Freudian world. Basically, uh, uh, the Freudian world was uh, was essentially from 1900 to about uh, 1975, 1980. It was in the 80s and the 90s when you had the shift to the Ram Dass. Uh, the whole 60s counterculture was Timothy Leary Ram Dass. That's the new era that we're in. We're in the era of postmodernism. Uh, prior to that, we were in the modernist era. And so when you talk about the, 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 the common era, the common to what? And of course, the, that common era leaves out the Muslims. So, so are we common to the Muslims? Are we common to uh, the Chinese who use a lunar calendar? You know, to the, to the Chinese New Year? And we're not. So the term CE is, the common era is really ambiguous. You're simply using a, a, a marker in history that will affect everybody. That is a good common point. And because the Middle East is in the center of is the center of of, of East and West, that's, that's the central point. Uh, you can use Christ as a center marker, and you see that there is that Christ does become a good marker, whether you believe in God, Christ as being God or not. It simply is a good marker. But the thing is, fifteen hundred years after. Uh, after the development of the calendar, and the thing is, the, the, the English had built, done uh, worked on this. They, most of the, and this is why Russia is still still with, in many cases, in terms of its uh, church calendar, is still an old calendar. It's still on the uh, old, the ancient calendar, the Egyptian astronomical calendar. It hasn't moved over to the solar calendar. Well, same thing with England. Same thing with the United States. It is only Central Europe, and a lot of what's going on today is the is, again, Central Europe coming out to sort of feel its chops and uh, uh, make Central Europe, the, 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 I was talking about the white Europe, the German, Germany, France, the, 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 the area of Gaul, is the Galatians, is these people from Gaul who want to be the center of the universe. They're the ones uh, who are creating a large chunk of, of the turmoil, the wars, the uh, regime change. It's all dictating from there. All in many cases, di dictating from the papacy. So, well, 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 that can't be true. It's all the Jews' fault. Well, no. 
If you study the Jews and you understand, understand what a hedge fund is, then you understand that the Jews were always simply the middleman. They were the bureaucracy. The directions for things were set by the kings and queens. And what happens, the bureaucracy, the middlemen, simply did the bidding. And that means my dinner is ready and we will continue our conversation when we come back. There's the bus. Well, it's just uh, oh, not even an hour later when uh, we uh, had to cut the uh, conversation short because uh, my breakfast was ready. Yeah, 8 o'clock in the evening breakfast. That's the way things go. Anyways, back to our conversation. And it's about this whole concept. Of, see, uh, <coughs> uh, let's get into... The nature of conspiracy theory is is the assumption that, and if you look at a number of conspiracy theories, that everything is interconnected, they're all working together, everyone's on the same page, and everyone, you know, is one, one happy chorus line. Uh, but that's not the case. Nothing is scripted. Uh, conspiracies are basically people who have similar interests, not the same interests, similar interests, Working together to a certain degree on things that they have, they feel they have, will have a mutual benefit. And what happens is because the Jews never had a particular side to things, they were always, by their nature, separate from everyone else. One, they became very easy targets. Uh, for any particular group who wants to sort of blame something on someone. I'd, and in order to have an enemy, you have to have a visible enemy. They have to be seen. And creating an enemy is, is, is a way to keep people united. It's not that necessarily that they are indeed enemies or, or, or this is entirely the case. But rather, you do this to create a sense of unity amongst the people. This is how you create the cause to war. This is what was done... Uh, you know, with the 9-11, oh, we have to go, you know, we have to redeem our boys, we have to seek revenge, you know, and 9-11 was a call to war, we produced the Iraq war, but it produced most of the wars that we're still in today. Uh, and of course you have the Keegans and you have the neocons who benefit from war, they profit from war, and you have the different sides, surprisingly, the Biden side, the Democrat side, which we expect to be anti-war, but aren't actually anti-war, they're pro-war. Why? They simply use the anti-war as rhetoric to be become popular, and once they're elected, they go back to war. And so what happens is that, and because they, they, they talk a good game, they, they, they're able to say things well, they, what they do is they pacify the people. And it says, religion is the opiate of the masses. This is Karl Marx. Well, what do you mean by religion is the opiate of the masses? Religion is the th are, are the things you believe in. So if you believe in something strong enough, they can say things in the right way that will say, okay, fine, you take care of things, I'm going to go back to doing what I, whatever, whatever I was doing. You go back to your happy life or whatever you were doing, and that's what the Democrats do. The Democrats are kind of like a con artist. They talk a good game. And they satisfy the person enough so they don't bother looking any further. So the Democrats, if you elect a Democrat, uh, the, the people who want to create war can do whatever they want to do because no one's paying attention. This is, this, is how, this is how the Roman circuses worked. You give the people enough entertainment, enough uh, uh, of a circus, and they didn't get into your day-to-day -day business. So how do the Jews work into this conspiracy? Well, they seem to be at the center of everything. Well, that's because historically they were. And because when the, when the, when the, the basically where, where Germany is today, that's where Gaul was. They were barbarians. So were the Arabs. The Arabs were barbarian as well. Uh, a large chunk, even the Vikings, for the Anglo-Saxons, for the Anglicans, for the English, they were barbarians as well. And so they didn't know how to read and write. So who filled in for the reading and writing? Well, the Jews did. They formed the bureaucracy. Because they could read, they could write, they could count. 
So they handled uh, a lot of the, the middle work uh, for those who ruled. And so as long as the rulers were happy and the people were happy with the circuses, the bureaucracy, the, the Jews at this particular point in time, were free to do whatever they wanted to do. There was no interference. So their job was, as a, bureau, as a bureaucrat, keep your leader happy. And, you, and, and they're like, like they're, there's a British comedy, uh, two British comedies, they're kind of uh, 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 sequels of each other. One is called Yes Minister and one is called Yes Prime Minister. These are not new shows. These are old shows. These are from the 80s. To understand that the whole bit of the stolen election and the corruption of the called the swamp that Donald called, called Trump the swamp has been there for a long time. It's nothing new. This is something that's we would say historic. But historic history is not what you get in the textbooks. Textbook knowledge, what called standard knowledge, is approved knowledge. There is a lot more than the approved knowledge. In fact, academic knowledge, intellectual knowledge, those who call themselves educated, are on the lowest level of gnosis, of knowledge. They're at the lowest level of knowledge. There's a lot more beyond them. However, they convince themselves that they are it, that that's all, that's all there is, and you will see people. You will see people who will not argue, who will not argue the particular issue, but they'll argue position. I am a so and so, so therefore I am right. This is Lionel Brown. Lionel Brown's the thing. He says he's a lawyer. He knows. You're not a Marxist. You, they aren't Marxists. They aren't communists. Stop calling them communists. You don't know what a communist is. I'll tell you what a communist. Is. I have friends who are card-carrying communists. They're card-carrying Marxists. And so he knows. The authority starts with him. He's an intellectual. He works on an intellectual level. And he assumes his level is the top level. There is no more beyond him. So it's always from his own perspective. And the thing is, ironically enough, he was initially a Democrat. Even though he says, oh, I was never in anything. I'm independent. You can see people because they'll have a particular leaning to things. And you can see as they start following along that they, they 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 develop a sort of in many ways a religion where they develop an attachment to a person, and they develop a belief in the person. Like Lionel Braun had developed a belief in Donald Trump, even though he said, "Oh no, I don't believe in Donald Trump." He says he's a great man. But you can see how as Donald Trump got into this election cycle, because. Trump wasn't doing what he, what Lionel LeBron was suggesting needed to be, or, or not a suggestion, but saying should be done. Lionel LeBron got very upset. He says, "You know, they're going to steal the election." And he says, "How does he know they're going to steal the election? Because a large chunk of his friends are Democrats, and this is what he's hearing. He's hearing from, and he's at a high level of them uh, 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 in the party. He's where the elites are, and they're all talking about the theft of the election." And I think this is what Donald Trump, it doesn't matter what he said or what it came out, it didn't matter what anyone, he, what he says. This is why he doesn't come out now. So people, why is he coming out and saying something now? Because it doesn't matter. Nothing gets out, nothing is heard, it's all either a cult thing, where it's a religion, or it's a... It's completely ignored. So there's no reason for Donald Trump to come out now. And I think the whole election was not about Trump or Biden anyways. It's about the direction that the world is going in. Do you want more violence or less violence? Donald Trump, for whatever he, reason he did this, was pulling the troops back. He wasn't engaged. He wasn't doing regime change. That's why a lot of the Republicans weren't happy with Trump. It's because he wasn't doing regime change. What happened is he got together with Biden. Biden said he didn't know, doesn't know what he's doing. And same thing with Kamala Harris. She doesn't. She she's a puppet up there, and so they're doing whatever they're told to do, and they want please the people, make them happy. Let's go back to war, and this is about war. And who is the enemy? China, and in many cases, Russia is. Because why? Most the Democrats and the Republicans have one side particularly. They're on one side only, and they're on the they're on the Germanic side. That's the origins of the. Holy Roman Empire. That's where they're from. 
This is the origins here. And we're seeing the origins of, in many cases, you can see this in the Dostoevsky's uh, Brothers Karamazov. You can see the work, how, how this is playing out. That this is basically the Catholic Church uh, seeking to control everything. This is Euro about European control. George Soros came out and said this. Why are they against Modi? Why are they against China? Simple, because they're not properly European. He came out and stated this in his Twitter. He watched a Twitter feed. Why are they against China? And George Soros is anti-China. And you see this all on the Q people now talking about anti-China this, anti-China that, the China vaccine, and the China virus and stuff like that. Why? Because they're following the European model. And this is the, this is the Hegelian dialect, the dialectic. And it's, it's actually an illusion. This is what he never identified as. LeBron talked about the left-right left, right paradigm being an illusion, because it is. It's controlled by the same point. The point that controls the left-right is basically a, a, a Luciferian cult with the, with the Pope at the top. And the Pope titles himself. The Pope is titled Vicar of Christ. In Greek, that means Antichrist. So the Pope is literally titled Antichrist. But yet people don't see this. This is not understood. And the thing is, so how do the Jews play into this? Well, the Jews, because they're the middlemen. They have no particular interest on either side. And so they hedge. They, they act as the middlemen. They act as the go-between. And they use their communities, which are separate from everybody else, to do this. So what happens is the Jews become an identifiable, an identifiable group uh, for control, for bureaucracy, and if so, something goes wrong with the government, well, it's their fault. <laughs> Very simple, because a large chunk of the people in there who could read and write, who could manage things, were the Jews. And that's because they had the yeshivas. The yeshivas are the key to, to the Jewish success. Get rid of the schools, get rid of the yeshivas. And the Jews are the same as everybody else. The only ones who are different from uh, the, everybody else, called the, particularly the barbarians, were the Greeks, the Hindu, the Indians, uh, who are the Hindus, and the Chinese. They all had schools. And the schools were surrounded by monks. And today, even to, today, the Eastern understanding, and this is where Greece comes out of the East, they always had monks around. They always had these, these, these monastic schools. It's, so the monastic school is not something new. It's something that's actually old. And they taught the kids from, from kindergarten on, on up until whenever they left and went out to work. My uncles were child laborers. They, they left because they couldn't afford the school or they had to go out because they couldn't afford, you know, the parents couldn't afford to send them to school because they had to bring in money so they could get something to eat. So they, at 10, 11, 12, they left their house and went out and worked. And, but the, today, when they came out, when, when they came over to the United States, it was a whole new ball game. They were able to make themselves kings. They were able to earn their own fortune. Where necessarily, we couldn't necessarily do that back in your old country. Anyways, uh, uh, I have to get back to my work, and uh, this will be explained more. I'll be coming up with two series. One is called Meditations. This will explain how meditation works into the common world, uh, and how it, that fits into the new, into the call the current environment, or called current history or current events. Uh, there'll be tweet line plus. Those two things will sort of balance each other out and show how things are interconnected. So the history is there in the, in the textbook. That's the, that's the smallest amount of history. There's a lot more behind there, but you have to go find it. It's like a puzzle or a scavenger hunt.